Let's talk about thumb platers or military sabers of the 19th century, and specifically the Bavarian model 1826. Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator and Eastern Antique Arms as well. I'm a dealer of these things uh, and things like this as well. And I came across this model for the first time recently. Uh, basically, I came across this sword. I bought this sword. And to be honest, I'm not at all an expert on uh, German. Obviously, German unification happened later in the 19th century, but we'll call it German um, sabers and swords. I'm not at all an authority on German swords. I mostly specialise in British swords. Um, and I have fairly good knowledge on, on other European and American swords as well, but British swords are definitely my specialism. Now, if I just put the Bavarian sword down, I will come back to it in due course. Many times in previous videos, we have talked about the uh, checkered thumb placer that you often find on British swords. Now, these first starts appearing on British swords in about the 1840s, really, middle of the 1840s such that um, they were, and they were an optional thing, and they, were, they appear really on officers' swords, okay? So standard regulation swords don't have them for, for cavalry troopers, for example, but they start to appear on officers' swords as like an optional extra. So if you imagine you're buying your car and you decide to have a certain, you know, a spoiler or a running board or something added onto it, that is a bit like someone, an officer who is privately purchasing their sword from an outfitter or a, a sword maker directly, they sometimes would go, well, I want one of those checkered thumb placers. And quite simply, it's to add friction to where the thumb would be. Now, when I say where the thumb would be, let's just draw this sword for a second. This is an interesting non-regulation uh, Wilkinson, which I'll talk about another time. But you will notice that when you put the thumb up here, having some degree of friction there is very advantageous because it prevents the thumb sliding up. Why do you put the thumb up? Well, I've done videos about this in greater depth in the past, but very briefly, it gives you some advantage in cutting and a lot of advantage in thrusting. It brings the blade more in line with the forearm. So quite simply, a lot of sabre treatises, a lot of sabre fences of the time, uh, recommended putting your thumb up the back strap. Some of them said to do it all the time. Some of them to say, said to do it only some of the time. Some sources also specify that the thumb up the back is preferable with a lightsaber, not a Luke Skywalker type, but a light saber, uh, and is not um, preferable with a heavier saber where you'd use the normal hammer fist grip. However, you've got the option there. So the simple fact is that in the 1840s, lots of British officers' swords started to have this checkered portion up here, and it gradually seems to become more common as the 19th century progresses. Um, and indeed, um, eventually, by 1895, it becomes so normal that the new regulation backstrap, the 1895 backstrap, is fully checkered all the way down here. And not only is it checkered for the thumb, but you'll also notice it is squared off at that section as well. So this is all about making a more secure platform for the thumb to sit. By being flat, it's less likely to slide off either side. And being by being checkered, it's less likely to slide off either side, but it's also less likely to ram your thumb up into the bottom of the guard when thrusting into a person or a target of any kind. So clearly thumb placement was something that was important in British military swords. Just looking outside Britain for a minute, because of course there is a world out there, outside of the British Isles. It may surprise some of you, I know. Um, but what's interesting is the thumb up was used all over Europe and America and South America and all over Australia, the, the European world, shall we say, in the 19th century. But not all military swords have provisions specifically for the thumb. If we look at uh, French swords, for example, the French never really seemed to have made anything special in the design of their swords to accommodate the thumb, despite the fact that it was completely normal to put the thumb up the back. We could get into a whole discussion there of why did the British therefore think it was so important and the French just was like, nah, we'll just have a smooth back strap, but we'll te still teach people to stick the thumb up the back. I don't know, okay? We could, we could, I could come up with some theories and maybe that's a topic for a future video, but I'm not gonna discuss that here. At the other end of the spectrum, on the other hand, we have the Italians, and the Italians made huge provision for the thumb in the design of their swords, certainly from the 1870s onwards, uh, where they have a very specific grip shape, and even the guard, uh, in some cases, is cut away to accommodate the tip of the thumb as well. 
This does, if we come back to British swords, have its natural evolution finish, as it were, in the 1908 and the 1912, this is the officer's version, so the 1912, uh, thumb placer for the thumb there. And you'll notice this has a curved um, pistol-like grip almost. With a thumb placer, it is, it is dipped, uh, it, it grooves up here, so you're, you're not going to ram your thumb into the end of the guard when you're thrusting things at speed from horseback. Um, and don't think this is only a cavalry thing, you find this on cavalry swords and infantry swords. So infantry officer swords also have things like this. Now, this type of grip actually, although it's perhaps in a way most famous on British swords, actually has its roots, uh, we could say in Germany. Okay, we're gonna, you can see we're working our way back to the Bavarian sword here. Now this type of grip, although it became regulation in 1908 and 1912 for officer's swords, we start to see non-regulation versions of it, certainly by the 1890s, and there are some isolated examples from the 1880s as well. And if we look in the Wilkinson sword records for these types of uh, pistol-like grips with thumb places on them, they are referred to as German grips. So certainly in the British mindset, that doesn't mean that necessarily the Germans invented them, but in terms of their appearance in British um, sword making world or swordsmanship world, they were seen as a German thing. So where does it have its root in the German world? Well, that's kind of interesting and kind of complicated. For any of you who are familiar with the Mensa, the uh, kind of um, fraternity university, um, particularly Heidelberg dueling fraternities, that use a type of weapon called a Schlager. If we look at the Schlager grip, I actually don't own a Schlager, never have done, and uh, maybe I will do one day and we'll make videos about it, but Schlager grips are shaped somewhat like this. Now this, as it happens, is a probably Bavarian officer's sword. I featured it before, but I'm not going to talk about this sword in this video. But if you just look at the shape of this grip, you will notice this sword probably, it certainly dates to before 1883. I know that because of the maker's marks. Um, I don't know exactly when it dates from, but maybe 1860s, 1870s, certainly before 1883. And you'll notice that in this grip, we have the kind of the birth, the, the embryonic form of the grip that we see later on in a fully kind of evolved form, like we could call it, on this 1912. And we see the roots of it on this German sword where you have a literally a scooped out portion here for the thumb and then the grip gets fatter down towards the bottom and it slopes cants down forwards, which means that you can grip it in this very pistol fashion with the thumb up the back. Now that seems to have been present on the uh, Schlagers on, for, used for Mencia Fechten, um, so for fencing, uh, for dueling rather, for du getting these dueling scars you may have seen on old war films. Um, now it's a chicken and egg situation. Did that grip appear on the Schlager because it was already being used on some military sabres or did it appear on some military sabres because it was being used on the Schlager? Hands up, I don't know at this point. I think they're things that came around at roughly the same amount of time. Um, but I suspect that they probably came around because the, the Schlager isn't a particularly early 19th century thing as far as I know. I suspect that they, although there might be a symbiotic relationship between them, I suspect they appeared on military swords first. Now we come back to the Bavarian um, model 1826. Now, not all of the 1826 have this, but many of them do. Have a look at that back strap. Not only is it scooped for the thumb, but it is also checkered. Now, bear in mind, this is a model from 1826. That's seriously early. That's only 11 years after the Battle of Waterloo. There's nothing that I've ever seen in the Napoleonic or Georgian era. Well, I suppose we're technically we're still in the Georgian era here, but there's nothing in the Napoleonic era before the Battle of Waterloo that I've ever seen that really made provision for the thumb in the way that this does. So given that this is coming about already in 1826, that's about 20 years earlier than we first start seeing um, thumb places on British officers' swords. So it really seems that the Germans were way ahead of the curve when it came to provision for the thumb up the back strap. So, 
Very, very interesting, uh, to me it's a very, very interesting topic, clearly, because I'm here talking about it. Um, obviously I'm a massive 19th century sword nerd, but honestly in the evolution of swords I actually think this is a pretty big thing. Now, were there any examples of this in earlier centuries? We have to say, if we go all the way back to the 1500s, the 16th century, and we look at Dussac fencing, again, it's German, you'll notice that in Dussac fencing they do often place their thumb up the back of the Dussac, and they seem to have made provision in some Dussacs for that to be the case. So perhaps it was just a really German thing and bra gradually it just kind of spread. Uh, I think that's possible. I am not aware of any military regulation swords that predate this Bavarian 1826. Now, as I say, I just repeat once again, I am not at all an expert on German military swords. Are you aware of any earlier examples of this very specific pre pre um, uh, provision for the thumb? This scoop shape and checkering on here. Just like, I mean, if we look at the design of this hilt, if you didn't know this was a model from 1826, you'd think that that was a sword from the 1880s, well, 1870s, 1880s, 1890s. The fact that they were doing this in the 1820s is quite, to me, extraordinary, really. Uh, not to say this is necessarily an example that was made in the 1820s, this is probably one which dates to more about 1850. But nevertheless, I think it's really, really interesting that they were doing this so early on in Germany. And it does make me think that really when we see uh, any provision for the thumb or checkering or scooping, um, and, you know, the evidence that in Britain this was known as a German grip when you had this scooped out bit for the thumb and a, and a sort of canted down angle on it, uh, to, uh, a pistol-like grip. It was known as a German, gr German grip. So I suspect that in the 19th century this was seen very much as something which came from Germany and a kind of German invention. Although British sword collectors, I suspect in general, aren't aware of this and think of it as a purely British thing. It's definitely not. It came from outside. Anyway, uh, like I say, if you're aware of any earlier examples before 1826 of this type of scooping and checkering, let me know. I love to learn new stuff, um, and, uh, and if it's in German swords or perhaps from somewhere else, I don't know. Uh, perhaps it was found in Italy, perhaps it was found in Austro-Hungary, I don't know. Um, but uh, as far as I'm aware, this is the earliest model regulation sword, the 1826 from Bavaria, which features that provision. And I think it's a very interesting, as someone who fences with military sabres regularly, and I keep my thumb up all the time. To me, it's super interesting because it makes gripping the sword in that fashion far more secure, far more comfortable, far safer and more practical. Um, so there we go. Um, comments below, always interested to see. If you're not subscribed, why not do it right now? Uh, give us a like and I'll see you again soon back on the channel. Cheers, folks.